My oldest brother was an artist, the one below me was an artist. My oldest brother was my mentor, he was my idol. He's the one that made me understand that it was possible to do more than one thing in art. I used to sit on the couch and paint. I would sit on the arm of the chair, and for as long as he was there working, I was on the arm of the chair observing. In the fourth grade, we were making some dinosaurs out of clay, and I made a Tyrannosaurus out of clay. When I got done with it, just before it was getting ready to get fired, the teacher came over and she says, you know, I had put the eyes in the side of the Tyrannosaurus like it is, you know, and she says, it doesn't have any eyes. And she painted some eyes on the forehead, you know, and, and that got fired, you know, so we were, we were, when I'm taking it home, I have it in the shoebox, you know, after it's done, you know, I'm really upset that this Tyrannosaurus, even at my age, looks like a cartoon uh, dinosaur, you know, and I'm trying to be real, you know. We only live like five blocks from the school, so I'm walking down 37th Avenue going to our house. I guess he's on his way to work. He has his lunch boxes and stuff, and he's coming out. And I have my shoe box. And he says, "Hey, Floyd, what you got there? Um, uh, a dinosaur, you know?" He says, "Well, let me see it, you know." And I take the dinosaur out of the box, and I just throw it against the curb, you know, shatter it in all kinds of pieces because I didn't want him to see that that dinosaur looked like a cartoon, you know, because I didn't want to disappoint him. Dad had two jobs. My mom worked for two doctors and stuff, you know, taking care of their house and their children when she was taking care of us too. They were always very supportive of all of us. My mother was, she drug me around Denver in the summers trying to get me into an art program because I told her I wanted to go to learn some art. And, and we always ended up at those little Denver public art programs that were crafts, you know, they were making popsicle stick things and stuff like that, and, and that didn't work for me. She was always so disappointed that she couldn't find an actual place of teaching me how to draw and paint and stuff, because that's what I wanted. And I knew at that particular age that's what I wanted. And then my youngest brother, he was probably the most gifted of all of us in drawing and painting and so forth. And, but. He didn't have time for a career. The progenitor of Hearts and Minds really started after the, the shooting of my brother in, by the police in, in City Park in Denver in 1974. He had been diagnosed as a, a schizophrenic, and so he had mental illness. And many times I would go to Denver to make sure he was on his meds. And, Prior to the shooting, I was getting ready to bring him down to Colorado Springs because he was an artist also, and I was going to teach him how to oil paint. And we never had that, we never made that happen because of the shooting that happened in City Park. After that, you know, with the uh, repercussions of how it affected my family and the community that I grew up in in Denver, and started really concentrating on endangerment. Hearts and Minds is hopefully that your mind and your heart are in conjunction to do the right thing and to hopefully be able to protect yourself from the endangerment of being in this society as a young black male. As you move into the space, you are confronted with Floyd's uh, monumental installation, Hearts and Minds, uh, which the artist produced in 19, between 1993 and 1995. Um, and very kindly gave to the, the Fine Arts Center in, in 2020. Um, it's a work that is so substantial in, in scale, we don't often have the chance to show it, and we wanted to have this focused opportunity to both present the work, celebrate the generosity of the artist in giving it to the museum, and, and position it as a catalyst to inspire dialogue um, with other members of our community. There are creative contributions that are part of this project by several different partners um, who are all in some way responding to or whose work was catalyzed by Floyd's Hearts and Minds. 
So we have work in the show produced by Colorado College students, work in the show produced by high school students um, from D11, work produced in uh, collaborative work called Endangered, produced by a group of artists um, who had been working with Floyd over, over the years. Um, so Floyd's work is central to the experience. And the concept of having students contribute from their relationship with Hearts and Minds and the work that they've put in the gallery, which is just really, I just think that's just a wonderful concept and, and it's fabulous that we were able to include the youth. I just wanted to make something that kind of encapsulated how I look at the world um, and how I think a lot of those things are just intertwined and aren't necessarily disconnected from each other. And it just makes something for people to just enjoy it. For myself, the experiences that I've had in the past five years, they've been up and down, sticking through with things, being resilient, collecting things, making use of the things that are around you can make the most beautiful things ever. A person can read this in so many ways. We've talked about like the double consciousness, we've talked about duality, we've talked about resilience, generational trauma, generational curses, like abundance, wealth, all that stuff. And it's just like, you no, know, literally like we are abundant very gifted, very talented, and I wanted to make something that embodied that. This section in here was the first section that I did. And I remember that was on display at the Robichon Gallery in Denver when I first did it. And looking at it in the gallery, afterwards I realized that I felt like I had more to say about the subject. I felt like I could say more about the subject. It was over a period of years that, of accumulation, that it, it ended up being this. And you realize that you, you just haven't conveyed everything that you want to convey. This could still grow, you know. Sadly, that this is still relevant. You know, it could, I could still add more parts to it. What's going on in society in relationship to this has not come to an end. It makes it too relevant.